Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'd like to show you some biblical studies resources that were published in 2020. Before I do, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel so you can see videos on Bible commentaries, study Bibles, and theology books. Also, it really helps my efforts on YouTube when people click the thumbs up button on my videos, and so I would really appreciate it if you would consider doing that. What I have to show you today is about 10 or 12 resources that were released in 2020 that might be a biblical studies resource that you might consider and might find helpful in the future. Um, they range from I have a systematic theology book here um, to a couple of study Bibles, some biblical studies, uh, textual criticism, a little bit of history. So there's kind of a, a potpourri of materials here. And um, some of them are just released in the last couple of months. So I thought some people might find this helpful. The first resource I have to show you is a systematic theology book by James Montgomery Boyce. Boyce passed away maybe 15 or 20 years ago. He was for a long time the pastor at 10th Presbyterian Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, one of the reasons why people have liked his systematic theology book over the years is because lay people can read it, meaning it's not above their heads. Um, and uh, pastors also have found it helpful, of course. Um, Boyce was Reformed Presbyterian, and um, um, it's this this his theology is known for being very readable and very accessible to everyone. So, and I think that's why in this revised and expanded edition, um, the publisher has included a study guide with this particular book. The second one I have to show you, um, I've begun to spend more time with it in the last few weeks, and I like it. I'm impressed by it. Let me scoot my camera back here a little bit, just because it's a bigger resource. Uh, G.K. Beale, those who follow publication of Bible commentaries will certainly recognize the name of G.K. Beale. He has what's considered by most to be the best reviewed commentary on the book of Revelation available today. I'll put a link to that page, Best Revelation Commentaries, down below if you're interested in reading more about that. Um, Benjamin Glad, I'm not real familiar with him but he is a professor at Reformed Theological Seminary. And of course, G.K. Beale um, has been at Westminster Theological Seminary for many years. So what is this? It's First of all, it's a beautiful, high quality hardback book. It is called The Story Retold, subtitle, A Biblical Theological Introduction to the New Testament. It is basically an introduction to the New Testament. And it reminds me of textbooks that I use when I teach introduction to New Testament, in this case, or introduction to Old Testament. It's a thicker paper stock. Um, it's highly visual with art and maps and timelines. And it's perfect for lay people who are interested in getting an overview of the New Testament. And also, I would say, undergraduates, seminarians might find it helpful as well. It is not a verse-by-verse -verse commentary. I'm not even sure I'd call it a passage-by-passage -passage commentary of the New Testament. I'd probably call it a section-by-section -section commentary of the New Testament. So, not uncommon in to for four to five chapters of the New Testament to be covered in on one page. Uh, in this book, because it's an introduction to the New Testament, so some of the some of the uh, topics that are discussed for each book, I'll show you a, a book introduction here, um, like authorship, date, uh, purpose. Um, so here we go, Colossians and Philemon, authorship, date, occasion, purpose, outline, and then it gets into what I would call a section by section commentary of each New Testament book. So, and it also just, it, it reflects G.K. Beale's um, expertise, uh, especially in regard to the New Testament's use of the Old Testament. So I expect when the reviews come out on this that it's going to be very well reviewed and it's just of uh, excellent quality hardback book. Okay, the next book is about creation, the creation account in the book of Genesis, and it is called Retrieving Augustine's Doctrine of Creation. And very interesting book. Uh, Augustine had a view of the doctrine of creation that was ex nihilo, so it was created out of nothing, and it was also created instantaneously. And so the view, so Genesis presentation of a seven day uh, period it describes actually an, an instantaneous uh, 
creation moment, I guess you could say. So um, I'll leave it to you to research more on that of your own if you're not familiar with it. But uh, this book is by Gavin Ortland, and he is a pastor at First Baptist Church in California. I have no idea how to say that city name. O-J-A-I, California. Previously taught at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School or was a research fellow there. Um, so this is, again, Retrieving Augustine's Doctrine of Creation. It looks like this is going to be a series. I'm not, I'm not familiar with other volumes, so maybe more will be coming out, but it's called Ancient Wisdom for Current Controversy. The next resource I have to show you is on the Gospel of Matthew. This book is by David Bauer. The title is The Gospel of the Son of God, An Introduction to Matthew. David Bauer is a professor at Asbury Theological Seminary. This book is in three parts. The first part is the orientation to the Gospel of Matthew. The second part is the interpretation of the Gospel of Matthew. Um, and in three chapters, there is uh, Bauer provides commentary on, th on Matthew as his, he divides it into three different sections in those three chapters. So it's an overview of the material in Matthew. And part three is reflection. Um, Jesus in Christological titles, Jesus additional aspects of Christology, and so on. So this is an introduction to the Gospel of Matthew. The next one I have to show you is a study Bible. Some of you might be familiar with the very well-reviewed Bible Speaks Today commentary series. John Stott's volumes are probably the most well-known volumes in that series. Well, this is a study Bible based on that commentary, that commentary series. So there's bottom of the page notes for each book of the Bible, and the text itself comes from the text of the Bible Speaks Today commentaries. So... For example, the Romans volume in this commentary series was written by John Stott, as was Galatians and a few others. So the bottom of the page notes come from, in Romans, come from Stott's commentary in the BST series. Slightly edited, but it's still, um, it's still the author's words. So uh, I did, when I got this, I did do some comparisons with some BST volumes I had, and I found that it, that it is word for word. Um, and so if you like that series, I think that you will love this, this uh, study Bible, and it's the NIV version, NIV translation of the text. All right, the next one, I, I um, have been spending more time with it the last few months, and uh, I am impressed by it. It is called The Holy Spirit by Greg Allison and Andreas Kostenberger. This looks to be a new series. Theology for the People of God, I think, is going to be the title. So I would expect more, more um, theological uh, topics to be addressed in this particular series. It's a nice hardback from B&H. Greg Allison is a professor at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Andreas Kostenberger is a professor at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. So um, some might be familiar with Greg Allison. He writes on theology and historical theology. He has a book, a companion piece to uh, Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology. It's called Historical Theology, very well reviewed. Um, so that's Greg Allison. Kostenberger has written many Bible commentaries that have been well reviewed, so you might be familiar with him. So the approach to... This book is it's in two parts. The first covers biblical theology. So the authors talk about the Holy Spirit in different sections of the Bible. So, for example, the Holy Spirit in the uh, Old Testament and in the Pentateuch, the Holy Spirit in the prophetic books, the Holy Spirit in the historical and wisdom books, Holy Spirit in Acts, the Holy Spirit in Paul. So that's the first part is biblical theology going section by section through scripture and talking about the Holy Spirit. The second part relates to systematic theology and the Holy Spirit is discussed in relation to different subjects of systematic theology. So here's uh, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Trinity, intra-Trinitarian relations. The Holy Spirit in creation and providence, the Holy Spirit in scripture, the Holy Spirit in angelic beings, the Holy Spirit in human beings and sin, the Holy Spirit in Christ, the Holy Spirit in salvation, and on and on it goes. So those are the two major sections. Um, 
the a lot of people want to know in book on the Holy Spirit are the authors uh, cessationists or continuationists, and they are both continuationists. So, um, with regard to tongues, for example, both would argue that it is a gift for today. The next book I'd like to show you again. There's links. I'm going to put links to each of these books down below in the in the description box, and so um, you can find out more information about them through following those links. This book on textual criticism is called Myths and Mistakes in New, Text, New Testament Textual Criticism. The, it's edited by Elijah Hickson and Peter Gurry, and, but I think some will probably be more familiar with the name of Daniel Wallace, the forewords by Daniel Wallace. And this is, um, this is a collection of essays, first of all, on New Testament textual criticism. And interestingly, the myths and mistakes regard to myths and myths that Christians believe about textual criticism, mistakes that Christians make about textual criticism. So um, it's sort of you might what you might call an in-house book for the church. Uh, a lot of books that Christians have been writing about New Testament textual criticism over the years have been, or over the last few years, have been apologetic in nature, answering the answering critics like Bart Ehrman and and some others like that. Um, well, this is about myths and mistakes that that Christians tend to make. So, for instance, myths about autographs, and that refers to the original autographs of Scripture. Myths about autographs, what they were and how long they may have survived. Math myths, how many manuscripts we have and why more isn't always better. Myths about classical literature, responsibly comparing New Testament to ancient works. Dating myths, how we determine the ages of manuscripts. Uh, myths about copyists, myths about copying, myths about variants myths about orthodox corruption. So what this is really addressing is a lot of what um, we have read about textual criticism from an apologetic standpoint in the last, you know, 10 years or so, um, as that trend has, has occurred in Christian publishing. Um, this book is seeking to make some correctives on some of that data that has been presented and offer and uh, argues that we should offer solutions that are, that are more historically accurate. This is a really interesting book, uh, The Week in the Life of a Slave. This is, um, I think there's maybe five or six books in this series, A Week in the Life of. There's A Week in the Life of Corinth, A Week in the Life of a Fall of Jerusalem, A Week in the Life of Rome. This one is the week, A Week in the Life of a Slave. The author is John Byron, who teaches at Ashland Theological Seminary in Ohio. And... I was expecting this book to be a history of the first century. It kind of is a history of the first century, but it is actually historical fiction. It is the story of Onesimus and Philemon and Paul. And I'll just give you an example here. So the main text is a historical fiction regarding that story. But then there are these, um, sometimes these are called call-out boxes. I'm not sure what they're referred to here, but there's these sections. This one's called Becoming a Slave, and they're all over in this, in this book. Um, exposure of Infants, uh, Slave Names. And so in the middle of the fiction that you get that is intended to historically reflect Paul, Onesimus, um, and Philemon, um, and that situation and, and century and slavery in the first century and so forth, we get the, the historical, uh, data, the historical nonfiction, I guess you would say, um, scattered throughout the story to help us explain, to help explain what we're reading, not just in the book of Philemon in the new Testament, but just in this, in this historical, uh, fictional account of that, of the story in that book. So, uh, pretty fascinating. I haven't read it cover to cover. I've read sections of it and um, it's definitely piqued my interest. So um, I'll be spending more time with that one. The next two I'm going to show you together because it's of the same series and both came out in 2020 and it looks to be a new series out in biblical studies. Let me do this way to, so the chronology is correct. Uh, this is called the ESBT series, which stands for Essential Studies in Biblical Theology. Essential Studies in Biblical Theology. And I think these are the only two volumes out at the moment. I might be wrong by that. These are the only two that I have at the moment. Um, the first one is called Exodus Old and New, A Biblical Theology of Redemption. 
and this one's called Rebels and Exiles, A Biblical Theology of Sin and Restoration. So this one's focusing a little bit more on earlier New T Old Testament history, and this one more on latter Old Testament history. They're about 200 pages each. I think uh, pastors or, or lay people would do just fine with them. And um, it's a combination of biblical studies and theological insight related to different topics. Oh, I forgot that they said in the back of the book, it says the series takes cues from Genesis 1 through 3. Authors trace the presence of these themes throughout the entire sweep of redemption, redemptive history. So um, interesting series. I have not spent a lot of time with this one by Matthew Harmon. I spent a little bit more time with this one by Morales. Um, just because I'm, I'm particularly interested in the Exodus uh, time period in Old Testament history. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks to be an interesting series. So those both came out in 2020. Last one I want to show you is uh, Study Bible. Um, I've done a separate video on this one, um, so you can find it on my channel, a more thorough video. Uh, this is this might be the the most best selling uh, Study Bible of all time. It's the NIV Study Bible, and it's fully revised um, in 2020. So uh, it says over 9 million sold. That's a lot of study Bibles. So it's a uh, very visually appealing CNIV text, of course, with study notes at the bottom of the page that have been revised and updated. There is part of the revision is, um, is how visual it is, full color photographs and, um, just a ton of, uh, this is a called a Babylonian boundary stone. Um, Full color maps, pictures, timelines, uh, book introductions, an introduction to all 66 books of the Bible. And, um, and so I, I anticipate that this one's going to be going to do very well just because the NIV study Bible has a big following that has developed over the last, whatever it's been three, three or four decades or whatever it's been. And, uh, so this is a fully revised edition. So I think it will do quite well. So I hope this video has been helpful to you in understanding more about some of the biblical studies resources that have come out in 2020. And I hope one or two of them have piqued your interest as well. Again, let me know which ones did in the comment section below. Thank you for visiting Best Bible Commentaries.